HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth, where we're exploring all sorts of business topics. Experts from around the world, join me, your host, Diane Helbig, for a conversation where they share their expertise with all of you. Take what you need, when you need it. Featured on Inc.com, Forbes, and MSNBC's Your Business, this podcast is recognized as one of the best podcasts for small business, sales, leadership, social media, and more. When it comes to business, Accelerate Your Business Growth has got it covered. And now on with the show. My guest today is Ginny Carter. Ginny is a best-selling ghostwriter of 20 books, a book coach, and an award-winning author in her own right. She's on a mission to transform entrepreneurs, coaches, and consultants from everyday experts into respected thought leaders and in-demand speakers through the book that grows their reputation and expands their business. Her guide to writing a business book, Your Business, Your Book, takes you through the process of planning, writing, and promoting your own book. Thanks so much for being with me today, Jenny. It's lovely to be here. I'm thrilled to have you here. This is um, a topic that I know I am asked about a lot because I've written books, but I couldn't begin to tell people (laughs) what to do or how to do it. I I only know, you know, pretty much what worked for me, but Mm -hmm. I'd like to start. I would love to get your input on this question. Why write a business book? Yeah, well, that's a very good question because it's uh it's not an easy, not an easy task, is it? As you've as you've discovered for yourself, I'm sure. <laughs> and um, why on earth chain you chain yourself to the keyboard to spend months of your life uh, writing a book? Um, <laughs> so, I think it, it's it's a it's a personal choice. Um, many of the people that I work with uh, want to write a book because it helps them to raise their profile in their industry. Um, it's really impressive when you, when you, you know, when you write a book. I mean, people, uh, you, people know that you, you have enough information and ideas about your area of expertise uh, that you can write a whole book about it. And that, that, you know, that, that is an impressive thing. So, so it's a good way of raising your status, raising your profile. It's a good way of reaching more customers, more clients, because they can find you through your book, uh, as well as uh, as well as in all of the other ways that you promote yourself. Um, it's also uh, a lovely legacy to leave. Uh, you know, if you've if you've been working in your industry for a while and you want to um, share what you know and help people, uh, that's 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 a great reason. Um, so, and and it's also, I think, a really good way of making you think deeply about what you know and write about it in a structured way uh, because it's only when you do that that you really understand how much it is you do know and I know quite a lot of people who when they've you know when they've been writing a book they've they've actually um you know they've actually come up with new frameworks new concepts new models new ways of working that they wouldn't have thought about if they hadn't written a book so so those are just three very good reasons uh, and there are many more those those are great and do you find that people um don't think what how do I want to ask this question um think that 
whatever they know isn't uh, that valuable or that everyone knows what they know. So why bother writing a book? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a this is a common thing. And um, I think because we're so familiar with what we know, we, we find it hard to understand that other people don't know it. <laughs> and, and I think you know, if you work as a consultant or you, you know, work as a business consultant or you work helping people in some way or another, you soon learn, don't you, that things that are obvious to you aren't obvious to others. Uh, and there is this huge need out there for whatever it is, you know, there, there's a huge need out there for it. Um, and I think also another thing to bear in mind is some people think, oh, well, loads of other people have written a book about my my area you know there's there's so many books out there why why should I write another one and to that I always say well how many cookery books do you own how many (laughs) recipe books are on your kitchen shelf you know when you're interested in something you don't just buy one book about it uh you write you know you buy you buy a whole range and it's uh, uh, people are people who are interested in something will always want more than one take on it and your book is your take on your on your subject boy that's a great point I that is great okay so um, thank you for sharing that. And so if people are listening and we've gotten them past that point, why? Uh, how do, where do they start? Yeah, well, I always say start with the plan. Um, I, I do talk to quite a few people who have got partway through their book. They've run out of steam. They're not quite sure what they're doing. They need help. Uh, and they said so they come to me. And um, often I find, or more often than not, I find that when I talk to them about why they run into trouble with it they um it's because they didn't really know what book they were writing mm. I know that sounds strange but it's really easy to write the wrong book and with yeah. all the time and effort you're going to spend writing this book you want to make sure that it's the right one so it's got to be the book um, that your readers want to read not just the book that you're interested in writing yourself uh, and it's got to be a book that does something for your business, so if indeed that's the reason that you're that you're writing it. You know, if you want to do it, re- write a book to raise your profile, it kind of, I know it sounds really obvious, but it makes sense to write a book about what you know best and gear it towards the people that you want to be your clients or your customers. And basic as that sounds, it's actually very easy to lose sight of that when you bury yourself in 50,000 words of text. Um, it's very easy to go off track. So I always say do a, do a strategic plan at the beginning. Decide what you want to get out of the book, you know, what, what your objective is, who it's for, what it's about in a very specific way, and make sure those three things all really tie in together and tick those boxes. Then, given that you now know what you're writing about and who it's for, what, what is your table of contents going to look like? So what will your readers want to know first? What will they want to know second, third, and so on? And so you just kind of got a really big top line plan there that just gives you a map, a roadmap for your book. And then uh, when you're looking at your individual chapters, think about the points you want to make and what order they would go. in. Now, I know all this sounds a bit dry and some people who aren't really the planning type, you know, might kind of groan a bit when they hear that. But I tell you, it just makes it so much easier to write it because you're not trying to think about what you're going to say at the same time as how you're going to say it. All you've got to do is then focus on the how bit, you know, the, the creative side of it, because you know that your point's up front. Uh, it stops your brain switching back and forth, back and forth between those those two modes and just makes your life a lot easier. Yeah, and I think those two modes are what get in people's way when they're writing, right? That's like writer's block. It's that, okay, wait, I don't really have the um, the roadmap in front of me. So I sit here and I think about, what's next or what is the roadmap or where am I going? That kind of thing. You know, what do I say? Oh, completely, completely. And and then it's just hard work. You know, it's hard work for your brain to be thinking that way. It's a lot easier just to do the writing uh, when you know what you're going to say. And also as well, it stops that awful situation where you get to halfway through chapter three and then you realize that you maybe haven't got as much as you thought you had to say in that chapter and then oh no what do I do now and oh no there was that thing I put in chapter one maybe I should put that here and well now I need to cut and paste cut and paste cut and, cut and paste and it all just goes goes haywire so um, that can be pretty soul destroying so yeah it's uh, good for the motivation if you planned it out for sure yeah yeah for sure now I I think another problem um is in, in actually making that happen so it's a great place to start however um, a lot of people have so many ideas 
that they either want to put all of them in a book or they just really don't know how to cull through them to, you know, create anything that makes sense. So, you know, what does someone do if they're, if they're one of those people who have just a, a ton of ideas of what they could write about? Yeah, well, that's the other extreme, isn't it? So, yeah. um, so I, the first thing I'd say is that you don't just have to write one book. You know, if you've got a lot of different ideas and they're quite mm-hmm. diverse, you can write one book first and then have another book, uh, you know, in a couple of years or whatever, and, and do another one after that. You know, you're never gonna, you're never gonna get everything in one book. So um, accept the fact that only some of your ideas are going to be in your first book. But think of it as your first book. It's only your first one. You can do another one after. Um, so that's, that's one way of looking at it. And I think um, the key thing is to always start with your readers, always go back to your readers. So you know, what is it that they want to know that's, that you, what's the big question they have that you can answer? What's the, the wisdom, that invaluable wisdom that you've got to share that they would be fascinated to hear about they're desperate to learn about uh, and anything else you know gets put to one side you're just focusing on that one thing um, and and I think starting always whenever you've got any problems whenever you feel stuck always going back to your readers you can't go wrong if you do that because as long as you know who your readers are and of course that's part of your planning process um, then you then you, you'll always be making sure that you're 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 giving them the value that, that they want out of the book Okay, that makes sense. That that makes a lot of sense, and, and it's definitely easy to say, isn't it? Easy, yes. But but, um, but not so easy to realize yeah. when you're <laughs> feeling confused and frustrated, which I know uh, can often happen. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. And will you talk to me some about publishing? Because this is another question that I get a lot um, about getting a publisher um, or having an agent. Uh, self-publishing, you know, just what 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 is the the real story these days on that whole area of book writing? Yeah, well, I think we're we're luckier than we've ever been before as authors now because there are so many different ways to get our books out there. Uh, it used to be you had to go cap in hand to a publisher, and if they said no, <clears throat> then your book or your your manuscript, as it was, uh, would just kind of sit, sit sit there on your computer or your shelf and you know never see the light of day. Um, now we've got many more options. So I, the way I usually describe it is to think of it as three main options. Um, the first um, is traditional publishing, so what we normally think of as publishing. So uh, a publisher then signs a contract with you as an author to to produce your book um and in return you give away your your uh, rights to the book um and they then take on all the financial risk you know by all of the production process they pay for they take it take it on board and they they publish your book and get it out there um and in order to get that kind of a deal they're obviously looking for a big return on their investment so they they will want to take on a book that is going to sell many many copies um they're looking for a you know a commercial deal essentially so your book has to have that kind of wide appeal and and that's not always that suitable for business owners who might have more of a niche audience um you might end up writing a book for them for the publisher that you wouldn't ideally have written just to suit their needs um, because you also lose quite a lot of control over your book but there are benefits as well you know there's a certain amount of prestige in a traditional publishing deal Um, and and i think if you want to go down that route it's just worth knowing that it isn't easy. You know, if you need to write a proposal, which is like a sales document for the book, uh, approach agents and publishers with it, um, you know, get a lot of knockbacks. You probably won't succeed at first. I mean, I don't know how many uh, publishers JK Rowling went to before she got, before she got (laughs) successful. Um, Even somebody like her, you know, had a lot of, had a lot of um, challenges along the way. So so it's something you have to really want, I think, uh, and uh, and make sure that you've got the book and the audience and the platform of your own, the marketing platform of your own that a publisher is going to be interested in. Um, and then the other end of the scale is self-publishing. So that's when you do everything yourself. And there is really nothing that a traditional publisher can do that you can't do yourself. I mean, you can get a cover designer to design your to cover. You can get it formatted, proofread, copy edited. Uh, printed, uploaded onto the e-stores, e- you know, get it put into an e-book. There's, there's nothing that you can't do yourself if you want to. And many authors do that and 
do very well at that and you get to keep the vast majority of your royalties as well so um so that's an option in, uh, that you can take on board if you want to if you want to put that effort in yourself um you do then retain control of the book as well the downside of it is that i think my experience most people who are publishing experts don't always know what uh, what a quality book looks like you know it's very difficult to be objective about it and there's often a lot of self-published books I'm sure you've seen as well where uh, they just kind of just don't look quite right uh, and there's nothing wrong with them I mean the content could be perfectly you know perfectly good but it's just um, they don't always just look the part so you kind of have to know what you're doing with that I think um, and then there's a little bit of a middle option which is a bit in a way, it's a kind of combination of the two. So it's, you will go to a hybrid publisher or sometimes called a partner publisher and they will pay them, you pay them to publish your book for you. So the good ones will produce a very professional looking book and they'll know a lot about the publishing process and understand what, what needs to be done. Uh, you don't have to do all the work, um, but on the other hand, you do pay some money. So uh, I, I often work with hybrid and partner publishers um, for my clients because my clients kind of tend to fall into that bracket where they're, that, they're, they're the right clients for them um, but but it for, you know it's, it's really horses for courses it kind of depends on, on what's right for you which option you choose all right so yeah thanks I'm so glad that you broke all of that down um... hi my name is Sarah and I want to tell you about my podcast called can I offer you some feedback? I'm a business consultant and executive coach with over 20 years experience in change management, leadership development, and naturally providing feedback to high performers. My podcast is for those of you who have a complicated relationship with feedback, whether giving, receiving, avoiding, or seeking. Feedback is essential for our development. In each episode, you'll hear from real people across industries with their ideas, perspectives, and best practices on feedback. I'll also be sharing business bites with you, simple explanations of organizational tools, management techniques, and leadership philosophies that will help you and your businesses thrive. You can listen to Can I Offer You Some Feedback on your favorite podcast app or learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. Hi, I'm Christina Yerling Biro, host of the podcast Pop Culture Confidential. Join me as I go way behind the scenes with some of the most influential people in entertainment and media. Hear actors such as Succession's Brian Cox talk about his favorite characters to play. There always has to be a mystery. The audience have to be in a situation where they want to know what's going on. Meet studio execs like Pixar chief Pete Docter and learn his secret on how he makes us cry. Emotion is our first language. And so many others who are defining popular culture, from Obama speechwriter David Litt to Top Chef host Padma Lakshmi. We don't often think about food politically or we don't want to, but it really is. Join me. Search for Pop Culture Confidential wherever you get your podcasts. And and you said something that hit me, um, the good ones. So... How, how does someone know, because there's a lot of people out there saying that they're publisher, they're book publishers and book marketers. Mm -hmm. How do you know if you're really hiring a good one? Because you're going to spend the money. Yes. So, yes. You know, you, you want to be able to get the results. Are, are there things people should watch out for? Yeah, well, I think it's, um, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. You need to do your due diligence um, a good place to start is to ask any of your friends or colleagues who have published books whether they've worked with a hybrid publisher before and um, would they mm. recommend them so I mean that's a good place that's a you know really good place to begin mm. um, the other is to make sure that you talk to more than one and have a good conversation with them you should get a good sense of whether they're realistic and professional when you speak to them, much like you would if you were, I don't know, hiring a, a new accountant. So, you know, it's you don't need to be an expert in what they do to get a good feel as to whether they'll do a good job or not. Um, so you want to have somebody you can get on with, um, who you feel understands your needs. They should always be willing to have a free consultation with you at the beginning to explain how they work and um find out about you and your book mm -hmm. um and then also okay as, as well you've got the, the wonderful opportunity to see the books that they've produced so they should have a website where they show the books that they published 
uh, you know, you can buy a couple of those, look at the quality, look at um, look at how they've been put together and and decide for yourself whether that's you know, that's good enough for you. So those are the, mm. those are the main ways. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's great. Thank you. Um, now, talk to me about ghostwriters. So someone says, yeah, you know, I, I get it. I want a business book, but I'm really not a writer. I mean, I have my expertise. What, what, what's that look like? Yeah. So, well, people work with me as a ghostwriter, mainly to save them the time and effort for writing the book themselves mm. because they're busy, busy business people or busy coaches, busy, busy therapists or whatever, uh, or, or they want to write a memoir about their, their life experiences and they, they don't kind of, uh, just, they just don't really know where to start. They don't know how they're going to find the time. They don't know how to do it. Um, they want to outsource it to somebody who has who has the expertise and, and, and does it for a living. Um, so I, I often think in a way I kind of liken it a bit like going back to the recipe book analogy. It's a bit like the difference between cooking a meal at home and going out for a meal. You know, like um, when, when you go out for a meal, it's not because you, you, you're unable to cook. Well, for some people, maybe. Well. <laughs> <laughs> for most of us, it's not because we can't do it. Uh, it's because we don't want to do it because we don't yeah. want to have to go to the effort of doing it. And and actually, we know we'll, if we pick a good restaurant, we'll we'll get a better meal than if we'd have cooked it ourselves at home. So um, it doesn't mean to say you you know there's uh, you can't do it yourself. It's just it's just it's a it's just a a, a whole different experience to have, to go out and have somebody else do it for you. So that that's in a way what what I what ghostwriters will offer um, but I also think they do offer something else which is a lot of experience and also objectivity about the book as well um, so quite often I'll talk to people about their book idea and um, I'm able to give them some ideas as to how that they could restructure it or maybe tweak it a bit so that it works better for them or better for their readers as well sometimes people don't quite understand the fit between the audience and the subject matter uh, and I'm because I'm I'm not emotionally wedded to it all. You know, I can yeah. kind of stand back and look at it from a distance. Um, I can, you know, I can give them some ideas and, and work out ways of making it better than it would have been otherwise. And I think if you if you do it, if you go it alone and don't really get any input from anyone else, then that, you know, that's something you miss. Yeah, I, I think that is a huge point. So are there. Are there ghost writers who specialize in different genres and should people, you know, look for that kind of thing? Yeah, well, um, uh, there are ghost writers who, who work across many different genres. Most, most are pretty flexible, actually, because they're essentially okay. writers, so they can, they're, they're, they can turn their hand to, <laughs> to most kind of books. But for instance, I mean, I focus on nonfiction. Um, <clears throat> some ghost writers work on fiction books, uh, or they might work across both. Uh, I tend to focus on business books and self-help guides <clears throat> and memoirs. But some people might, uh, business memoirs, that is, some people might focus more on personal topics like personal memoirs or, uh, you know, stories about people's childhood or um, so it, it, it's kind of, uh, it, yeah, you can you can go for a ghostwriter that, that specialises in your kind of book. And certainly that's a good place to start. Um, but actually, you'll probably find that many ghostwriters will you know, be more flexible than that. I think the main thing is to have a look at what they've already written. Um, and just pay attention to the ideas they have about your book when you when you talk to them and you know what, what they think of it and whether they've got any value to add in those initial conversations and whether you get on with them as well I mean you, you know it's a, yeah. kind of a long-term fairly intensive relationship so you want it to be you want it to be fun and you want it to be you know a nice experience so speaking of long term um <laughs> how what Describe for the listeners um, really what that process is, you know, what are the stages of writing a book? How long should they expect to need to invest as far as time goes? Yeah, well, <clears throat> that's a, yeah, that's a, that's an interesting question because obviously it takes some people longer than it does for others. Yeah. Um, I know there are some people out there who say you can write a book in a fortnight or uh, we say for, so that's a UK phrase, like two weeks um, or um uh, or you know I don't know six weeks or whatever and, and I'm not saying that's not possible but I just kind of feel it's not something you have to rush and uh, it will take as long as it takes and and 
don't feel it's something you have to power through in a ridiculously short space of time. Um, I mean, I normally take six months over writing a book for a client, um, but when it's my own book, uh, I spent a lot longer than that because I was <laughs> I was fitting it around all of my you know all of my paid work, um, right. and which is of course what you know most of your listeners will be doing as well. So you know, just kind of be realistic with yourself, be easy on yourself. It's it's there's no point giving yourself some unrealistic target. Um, if you if you find it motivating to give yourself a deadline, then great. But otherwise, uh, I would I would bank on, you know, it's, it's going to be at least a few months. It's going to be, you know, somewhere between six months and a year, I think, for most people who, who are doing it all themselves. How long did it take you to write your book? Oh, my gosh. Well, my first book, I was really disciplined about writing it. Um, but I think that one took me a, a year. Mm -hmm. um, my most recent book technically took longer than a year. I wasn't as disciplined writing it. So other things would um, come up and I would shift my focus. You know, it wasn't my main thing that I was doing. So, you know, client work Yeah, uh, yeah. took a priority. Um, but yeah, that one was, and I had more that I wanted to make sure I was saying. In, in my most recent book. So it required more time and energy. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think there's always a balance between letting it take as long as it needs to take, but then not letting it take so long that you end up changing your mind partway through and thinking you have to add things to it. And oh no, I've done this now and I need to find a way of adding that yeah. in or I've, yeah. I've got a new idea about this. And, and then before you know it, the whole thing's just kind of an endless project, isn't it? And it never gets finished. It's knowing when to finish is is the, is a, is a important Thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because otherwise it can get really confusing. And, and I, that's why I really liked it when you were talking about the process and the table of contents and those sorts of things, because otherwise you you can get confused about where that content sits and mm. is it in the right place? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And if you've got a plan from the beginning, then yeah. you know what you set out to do. And yes, okay, the plans are bound to change to a certain extent. And sure. if you get part way through and realize that you want to change something, then that, that's fine. But it, it, it makes it a lot more manageable if you yeah. have got a structure to it all, um, rather than it just being this kind of amorphous project where you, you know, you, you're never really quite sure where the end point is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got to put a fork in this thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of people write, a lot of business people write books so that they can get speaking gigs. So will you, you know, share with the listeners, like, what does that look like? How, how do I use my book to get more speaking engagements? Yeah, well, I mean, speaking and, and being an author go very much hand in hand and it's actually I think quite hard to get paid speaking engagements um, if you don't have a book you know certainly to get good ones sure um, so I know from talking to speakers about how they've used their books uh, there are various different ways I mean I have to say I'm not a speaker myself I'm a writer I'm very happy behind a desk put me on a stage I'm not <laughs> going to be very comfortable so I'm talking I'm talking not from personal experience but what other professional speakers have told me um, and I think um, sending your book to a potential booker you know is, is an obvious speaking booker is obviously a, 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 a key tactic um, but one person told me it's a really good idea to um, put a little note on the book maybe put a, a sticky note on it or to put a bookmark in it for the particular chapter that, that will be focusing on the topic of the talk that you're going to give you know so it just kind of helps mm. to focus in on it which I thought was a nice idea yeah. um, but also you can um, you can use it on your social media as well I mean it's really important to make it clear that you're an author show pictures of your books and if you've got a show reel as a speaker um, try and do a talk where you hold your book up and get some footage of yourself talking about it because then you can include that on your website and it shows it's kind of like symbiotic relationship the book and the speaking it's kind of they, they feed into each other um, and then of course speaking is, a, is also a very good way of um uh, of selling a book so you can have books for sale or for giving away at, uh, at your at your gigs uh and um or you can put them into goodie bags for delegates or you know whatever depending on the kind of event it is so um the book is a sort of endlessly useful tool when it, when it comes to building a speaking career i think boy it, it's really true and i agree with what you said that 
it's hard to get paid speaking gigs if you do not have a book, mm, yeah. right? You're just not considered. Yeah, and in fact, actually, I, I spoke to one speaker who said that after he, after he had his book, you know, he's able to raise his, um, his fees by about, you know, that's half as much again. It was just um, having the book. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing, like magic. Yeah, boy, it really is. It's an interesting, I, I find it a, a, an interesting thing. Um, there was a question that came in my head earlier and I forgot it, but it is back now. So I want to make sure I ask it. And that is, what about the length of the book? Is, is there too short, too long? What What's yeah. the deal there? Yeah, yeah. So this is a question. In fact, there's a blog post on my website about how long your book should be. And I think it's the perennially most popular post. Uh, so clearly, this is a question that many people have. <laughs> and um, I, I think for a business, well, I, we tend to talk in numbers of words, uh, because it's difficult to talk in pages, because pages can be different sizes. And, uh, and, uh, and so, yeah. so numbers of words is, um, is usually the way we think. And your average business book is usually around about 50,000 words. So if you're thinking about how big a book that would be, it's probably be about 250 pages of a, of a book. So if you look on your shelf and find a book about that kind of length, you, know, you, you can see the sort of thing I mean. Um, but some books can be a bit longer than that. Memoirs, autobiographies, uh, you know, are often a bit longer. And then some business books are shorter because, I mean, there's an ever increasing uh, appetite for a book you can just read on a, on a flight for example or you know on a, on a train journey uh, you don't necessarily want it to be full length so it could be 30,000 words 40,000 words um, many um, guides that are self-help guides or, or books that are designed to uh, work around coaching programs you know can often be a bit shorter um, and if it's an ebook of course um, often they are shorter still because it's not really about the heft of the book then the, the physical weight of it it's it's just about the content so I mean it, there isn't kind of a, one clear answer for it but I hope that gives you a steer as to what to be aiming at sure oh it it, it absolutely does um uh sorry yeah it it absolutely um helps tremendously I know when I wrote my first book I sent it to the publisher and he read it and he said, this is a great first start. Um, the book needs to be about 36,000 words in order for us to be able to go to publishing. And I looked at it and it was, <laughs> it was uh, 17,000. <laughs> it feels like a lot then when you're writing 17,000. Oh my <laughs> God. I was like, wait a minute. You mean I have to like write in, in essence, a whole other book, right? Because <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, and I'm a succinct thinker, so I, I don't go into a whole lot of re repetition or um, embellishment. So mm -hmm. it was challenging for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's important that a book kind of looks the part, whatever part it is you want it to play. Yeah. Um, if you want it to be a quick and quick and simple guide, then a short book is fine. Um, yeah. If you want it to be like an authority builder or something that you're using to show, um, you know, to build your reputation, then I think a bigger book kind of says a bit more about you. Um, yeah. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you, you, your book should be as long as it needs to be. There's no point padding it out for the sake of it. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. That, that, absolutely. <laughs> So, oh my gosh, Jenny. So, you know, I love this topic um, and I appreciate all of the information. I think it, you've helped shine light on, um, you know, and given answers to questions that I know a lot of people ask because I get those questions a lot. Uh, so thank you so much for spending this time with me. And will you let the listeners know, you know, how they can find you and, and whatever you've got going on that they need to know? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So my website is the best place to find out more about me. That's marketing21.co.uk. Uh, or you can just put Ginny Carter in uh, Google and you, you'll, you'll see me there. Uh, that's Ginny with a G-I-N-N-Y. Uh, so yeah, you can find that. You see on my website and, uh, um, and you'll, there you'll find links to my Twitter and, and LinkedIn as well, where I, I like to hang out. And yeah, um, and, and I've also got lots of useful blog posts on my site that I'm sure if you've got any question about writing a book, uh, it will be answered on there. Yeah, I, I'm sure of it. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. And listeners, thank you. You are who we're doing this for. 
Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, a production of Evergreen Podcasts. Discover more episodes of this podcast and explore others at evergreenpodcast.com. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And if you're looking to get your sales strategy headed in the right direction, pick up a copy of Succeed Without Selling on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Hi, I'm Christina Yerling Biro, host of the podcast Pop Culture Confidential. Join me as I go way behind the scenes with some of the most influential people in entertainment and media. Hear actors such as Succession's Brian Cox talk about his favorite characters to play. There always has to be a mystery. The audience have to be in a situation where they want to know what's going on. Meet studio execs like Pixar chief Pete Docter and learn his secret on how he makes us cry. Emotion is our first language. And so many others who are defining popular culture, from Obama speechwriter David Litt to Top Chef host Padma Lakshmi. We don't often think about food politically or we don't want to, but it really is. Join me. Search for Pop Culture Confidential wherever you get your podcasts.